Are you fearful of change? Do you question whether you can do it or not? Is your self-talk kind or is it aggressive? Do you ask yourself, how can I do it? This change is too big for me. Will I ever make it to the other side? What does the other side look like? Will it be easier than where I am now? Will it be better? Surely you have a longing in your soul, a calling that's telling you that there is more for you on your path and your journey, but you're being asked to release and to let go and to surrender to change. The change is positive, but it may feel overwhelming because you just don't know what's on the other side. Our ego takes over and our soul hasn't got the right to really live its truth. Well, let me tell you this. If you let your fears make you fierce, then you have the opportunity to grow, transform and change. Welcome back, Soul Tribe. In this episode, we explore an exciting set of topics with the incredible divine feminine, Koya Webb. Koya is a wellness visionary, author of Let Your Fears Make You Fierce and founder of Get Loved Up podcast and conscious community that practices daily self-care and makes healthy living a priority to promote healing, social justice and spiritual connection. Today, we will learn from top spiritual health and wellness educator, and yoga instructor Koya, with over a decade of holistic studies and certifications in multiple yoga-based practices, Koya is dedicated to making a positive impact in the world of healthy living. She's a former competitive track and field athlete, combines the work ethic and dedication of an athlete with simple, practical, holistic health practices that anyone can follow to live a healthy and active lifestyle. So with that being said, Welcome, Koya. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here with us. We appreciate your time and energy. How are you doing today? Oh, I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. And first off, I have to say I'm excited because I want to get like in discussion about your book and and also the book's title was the inspiration for the episode. So today's episode, Let Your Fears Make You Fierce. And it's also the name of the book, which you released originally in 2020. And I know it's planned for the re-release. So for those that are interested, I just want to shout out that you can download a free online digital copy from www.koyaweb.com and you'll be able to see the information in the description box of this episode for the link. And Koya, in the book, I mean, you share so much around holistic health, self-care, spiritual tools you've used to you know, transform pain into power and and live a life in alignment with your divine calling, you know, your true soul's journey. And I just think and I'm so inspired by it. And I think it's so purposeful for our soul tribe, our listeners, because it's really a lot of what we try to talk about with our guests. And it really resonates not only for myself, but for the community. So everyone's really trying to find their true path of, of their soul. So I think that this book really just resonates all of that so well. So I really want to ask you, like, what inspired you to create this book originally and release uh, in 2020? Uh, I, I really wanted people to have a roadmap, have a roadmap, because I didn't have a roadmap of what to do when I'm uncertain or what to do when I am a little stuck or what to do when I just don't know what to do, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah. And I just want to provide a roadmap using some of the challenges that I faced in my life and some of the trauma that I went through and how I use meditation, yoga, breath work, chakra alignment, and living a healthy and active lifestyle to help me get through these times. I think as human beings, we're all going to go through challenges, but there's no roadmap on how to get through it, you know? And I I think having a roadmap and having a, a resource, which I feel like the book is more like a workbook and it's more like a resource for people um, to always come back to whenever you're going through a challenge or whenever you're feeling stuck to use it as a resource to have affirmations, to have yoga poses, to have a quiz on the chakras you can go through and see, you know, if you're balanced or imbalanced, it's just something you can go to help you get to your next level or to help you get in alignment with your soul's purpose. I love that. And I love the fact that 
you know, you say it's a workbook, so it's something that you can revisit. And I think that that's really powerful because we're at different points in our journey. We're never, ever like in the same situation over and over, unless there's something that just needs to repeat for karma's sake. But, you know, the fact that you can go back to the workbook and different stages of the book or different parts of the book, like you say, yoga postures or affirmations may be something that you need at that point, or you need a bit more guidance or just encouragement. So it's a really cool way of like self-help through the book. And I've been going through it myself and like having a look at the different sections. And I, I love the way it's been framed because it's easy. It's simple to understand. And it, it just takes away some people say the woo-woo of spirituality, but the mind, body, and soul concept, it's just so straightforward. So like, kudos to you for making such a great workbook and piece of inspiration. And with that said, I, I want to talk about audience, but I actually kind of feel that this book is transcendent across all ages. I mean, did you have an intention for it to be for a particular audience or age group or time in your life? I created this book for anyone from the age of, let's say, 14 all the way up to 84. You should be able to take the book and use it as a resource. And I did that because, you know, I have nieces and nephews and I have, you know, my family, my aunts and my uncles back home. And it's like, no matter how young or old you are, we all you know, have challenges and we all have fears and we all have times when we're like, no matter where you are, there's always a place where you can go to the next level, or there's always a place where you feel stuck and you just need that encouragement to get out of bed. And so I I created with, you know, the person that's looking to live a healthier lifestyle in mind. I created for a person that is feeling stuck. So I created for more of what people are going through, versus a specific age because I think at any age we all go through challenges and we can all use these free tools that we have from the universe to get through them like with breath work I mean we all get stressed out we're we just you know we're just, yeah. you know, getting out of the pandemic and it's like we all have been stressed we all are trying to figure out okay what what are we going to do how are we going to do it so using the breath work to calm down your nervous system so that you are not overwhelmed is very important. Um, Using the yoga practice to increase blood flow and have a healthy heart and healthy body, that's important no matter what age you are. Um, Creating routines and rituals, which I have in the book to, to start your morning routine in a mindful way and remember to drink your water throughout the day and eating fruits and vegetables and creating (laughs) nutrition. Like all these things are just practical things, really the average person needs. And, and the reason the title is let your fears make you fierce is because a lot of times we feel like we have to do this big thing to live our purpose, to be fierce means to just live your truth unapologetically, mentally, spiritually, and physically. So what does that truth look like? Well, when we're living in a way, we're living this healthy lifestyle that is in alignment with our highest truth. But when we're not expressing ourselves fully, when we're not taking care of ourselves, when we're putting everything, all the news and all the things that we don't want ahead of our truth, then we start to get, you know, a little bit distracted. We start to feel disharmony in our body. And then that manifests in us not being in alignment with our purpose. So this whole book is written to keep you in alignment with your purpose. I I love the way that you framed it as well. And I, there's something that I took from what you were just saying is in my mind, it was like buzzing in my head going incrementality, incremental steps, because you know, you said that you just can't get from like zero to 100 in the change or, you know, transformation is for me an ongoing process. You know, you're always sort of shedding the skin and growing and learning. And I think that the book having all these different like practical ways to drive a better well-being helps you to incrementally step up. You know, personally, I am vegan now, but it took me years to get there. And when I speak to people, I'm always like, I just don't think you can go from zero to 100 on it, you know, and I think you have to take steps that work for you. So I'm a big fan of incremental steps and progress. And it's so interesting, because 
I think that for ever long that we're on this earth, there's always going to be something that we're fearful of or a new fear or a change that we, we don't know how to embrace or overcome or endure. And that doesn't matter how old we are to your point. So it's interesting because I think if my dad had the patience to sit down with the book, I think it would really help him, right? He's, he's much older and he gets a bit faffed about with taking time to read something like that because he, he wasn't like raised that way. But I think, you know, when we think of our younger generation, these types of workbooks, this particular book in itself would be so phenomenal to have the younger generation working in this way, thinking in this way, because it's the foundation of a really balanced life. I mean, we're never going to always be in true alignment, but if we know what alignment feels like, then when we feel off, we know where to go back to center, right? Right. So, yeah, oh, it's it, your book is amazing. I mean, I need to work through some parts of it myself, and I'm I'm on the journey of yoga. So my personal incremental steps is yoga and how I do the next posture and the next posture. And I've been patient with myself. I could not do the headstand for years, Koya. And when I look at you, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in awe of this woman. She's incredible. But I also think having a role model and, you know, and, and, and people to encourage us is a way to say, you know, you can be over here and it might take you 10 steps. It might take someone else five steps, but everyone's unique and, you know, stay in your lane. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Just commit to doing those steps for yourself. And I can do the headstand now, but I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do the next posture for myself. So I'm just doing what's possible in my sort of next step. So I, I really love the way the book faces the different areas of, of change and growth for your health and well-being through steps. And I just wanted to pick up on like the way that you've framed the book in terms of facing fears and the techniques You know, the fear of change, Koya, I think is the biggest challenge for most of us. And obviously in 2020, we were thrown this big change that we just didn't know what was coming and almost had to just submit to this big change. I mean, that's a big example, but change is always happening. I mean, if there's ever one constant in life, it's change. So I I just wanted to like talk a bit more about that section of the book and what you know, the listeners could gain from, from, you know, facing their fears of change. Absolutely. I mean, I feel the only thing constant in life is change. I mean, if you look at nature, everything is always changing. Everything is always changing and growing and, and then dying and then going through this cycle. Um, Everything is resting and recovering and then being. And so we are the same way. We're just like nature. We're meant to thrive over time. We're meant to just start out with knowing who we are and knowing that we're here for a purpose. Like every single person is here for a purpose. And in that purpose, you're going to change as you grow, as you grow, as you learn, as you overcome challenges. And that's a beautiful thing. And honestly, I feel like if we embrace change, which is what of course, I teach in the book, it's just the more that you embrace that change and start to understand why these changes are happening, you can really appreciate the change. You can appreciate the challenges because you realize like, oh, this challenge was not meant to crush me. It was meant to make me stronger. And I think that's where sometimes we get stuck. We think, oh, why me? Why did this happen? But we don't see it as like, oh man, this is hard, but guess what? I've meant to overcome it. And I think when you have that fierce mindset of like, you know what, I'm going to be mentally, spiritually, and physically strong so I can un- overcome this. That's what it means to let your fears make you fierce. Your fear in me like, oh goodness, why did this happen to me? I don't think I can get through this. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough uh, support. I don't, you know, and you can get stuck in those limiting beliefs. Or you can say, you know what? I am going to let this make me strong. I'm going to get the team I need. I'm going to get the finances I need. I'm going to apply for that loan. I'm going to do what I need to do. But it takes a while to get there. If you weren't born like that and that's that's not your natural way of being, it does take some time to get up the courage, to get up the strength, to feel confident, empowered. And that's what um, I do in the book is just give a lot of affirmation and a lot of 
tools people can use to build their confidence and to express themselves fully. Yeah, I, I, I love it. And I'd be honest, if I had your book in the beginning of 2019, because that's when I wanted to change, change was, I, I didn't choose to change. Actually, a lot of change was just coming at me. And I think that's when you, you build up that fear. You're like, oh my gosh, no, you're trying to stop it. And the universe is not letting you stop it because the things are coming and thrown in your direction that won't let you, you know, avoid the change. And so if I could have gone back in time and had your book, I think that would have been brilliant. But I'm glad that there are resources like this and there's more coming through now. And I think that this is a, this is a really valuable place to, to to share this type of information. You know, I don't think there is enough of it. And this is why I'm here on this podcast. This is why I'm so grateful for you to be here, Koya. And actually, you have a podcast, right, called Get Loved Up. By the way, love the name. I'm all about self-love. And I, I just wanted you to talk a bit more about the podcast because our listeners love a podcast episode and I'd love for them to tune in. I've been tuning in to some of yours. I w- I've watched a few on YouTube as well. What kind of content do you cover and topics? Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy you've been tuning in. And the Get Loved Up podcast is just meant to inspire. And we inspire and educate in the areas of spirituality, well-being, and entrepreneurship. Because I, I truly feel that once you connect with your your purpose, your soul's purpose, not the my purpose, not um, someone else's purpose, not the purpose someone might say you need on Instagram or on TV, <laughs> but your own purpose, um, then that is the core of moving in alignment with why you're here on this earth. And then with that, of course, you have to be well, because even if you have a purpose, if you're sick or if you're you're injured or something like that, then you know it's going to be hard to live out your purpose. So well being, we talk about nutrition. We talk about, you know, different ways to stay fit and live a healthy and active lifestyle, scheduling, sleep, all that fun stuff. Um, And then entrepreneurship. It's like, okay, you are on purpose. You are well. And now how do you balance your energy so you feel like you're in alignment with the energy of abundance? And so that in every area of your life, you feel like, okay, it's not about how much money you have. It's about having what you need to live the lifestyle that you want to live. Because a lot of people might have a lot of money, but they're super unhappy. And so I never look at it from a standpoint of, you know, how much money in the bank more. So do you have enough to live the lifestyle you want to live? And are you living in alignment with your purpose? So that's kind of what we talk about on the Get Loved Up podcast. I enter some amazing guests like Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith, Lisa Nichols, Marie Forleo. We just had Jeff Krasno from Commune on. And we just have amazing people, Krishna Carr. Like it's just really amazing people coming on the podcast and sharing, sharing their love and sharing everything that they are, Coop Blackston. And so I'm just looking forward to just continue to bring amazing thought leaders leaders on in the areas of spirituality, wellness, and entrepreneurship so that people can see like they, we all have challenges and you might think, oh, they don't have a challenge. Their life is perfect. And then they get on and they're like, oh, I'm having all these challenges. <laughs> this is how I get through it. And I think it's important because sometimes your Instagram reel is not sharing all of your challenges, but when you actually get on a podcast, you'll see like, oh, behind the scenes, Yes, we are all going through challenges and you, we are not alone. And then I think we can heal together when we realize that we're not alone. We go through similar challenges, but those challenges are meant to make us stronger. Yeah, absolutely. We can heal together. And I love that term. And, and you're right about Instagram. You know, I think we don't celebrate the challenges as much. It's not that type of platform to talk about challenges, but more about successes. So it's really hard to see what really goes on behind the scenes. So I do love a good podcast. I definitely open up on my episodes and so do the guests, which I think is really helpful. So I encourage all of our listeners to check out the Get Loved Up podcast. Um, And also as a vegan and almost made a year being vegan, I've seen some of your videos on recipe content and I I loved them. Honestly, actually, I was like, I didn't realize that you had all these videos around like what you eat in a day and why and all the information around it. And I think, you know, everyone feels it's so challenging. Like I said before, to, to meet a vegan lifestyle, like I've met people going, oh, so 
you're you're like truly special because you did it. And I was like, no, I'm no better than you. Because, you know, I grew up eating meat or I grew up, you know, with all these different other lifestyle and eating behaviors, but it was only what I knew. And then when I knew better, I started to try and make changes to become better, right? But I think sometimes we get a bad rep when you say you're vegan, like, oh, you're going to go into that whole vegan spiel and you're going to try and like brainwash me to become vegan or I'm bad to animals. So I try not to do that, but I think that definitely giving the benefits of why a vegan lifestyle plant-based is good for the health and helps you align with, you, you know, a better well-being, especially at a time now where health is is really like a big a big topic for everybody. I've been I've been noticing that more friends and family are more interested because they seem to see that I I look and feel healthy and it comes across quite well so they're like, "Oh, what are you eating? What are you doing?" So I I just wanted to talk about your content and your videos uh Koya because you're a vegan, right? I don't know how long you've you've been a vegan, but I'm just really curious about your journey and if you could share more. Absolutely. It's been over 13 years. And honestly, like I'm from the South and I ate everything too. I'm a foodie. I've always been a foodie. Now I'm a vegan foodie. But before I, I ate regular things and I also ate, you know, like uncommon things like ostrich and alligator and crocodile. And I was always just like kind of fascinated by food. And and then when I realized that, I mean, like, hey, you don't need to eat these foods to be healthy, which of course, if food got a pyramid, you look at it, this is what you're supposed to eat. I'm listening to the um, TV, this is what you're supposed to eat. So I'm eating it. But then when I realized like these foods aren't the healthiest foods for my body, eating animals are not the healthiest thing for me. I was like, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that on a regular basis. And so I, I started being more mindful about what I was consuming. And then I realized not only Is it not great for me to eat animals, but it's also not great for the animals because they're not just a happy cow that, you know, grows up. And when it gets old, you know, you um, use it, every part of it to eat and to consume it. No, it's like their cows being abused and, you know, mistreated. And I I don't want to have any hand in that. And, And so that's what really made me go 100% vegan because I think health wise that, you know, you everyone should be eating primarily plant-based just on on the point of energy. Like the, the more plants, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds you eat, you're just going to have more energy. So I, I do encourage um, people just for the sake of eating less processed food, eating more plant-based, food, you're just going to be healthier. And then when it comes for my decision to be a hundred percent vegan, it was just because, you know, one, most animals are, are abused and mistreated. And, you know, I don't want to be a part of that. And then two, if we switched over to a plant-based diet, it has such a great impact on mother earth. And, you know, we use less water, we use less land, and then people starving in other countries, we'd be able to feed them too, because we would have a plant-based ecosystem. And so I just think it's more sustainable for the planet. And that's where I'm voting. We vote with our dollars. So it's, I think it's really important. And what I love is that more people are voting with their dollars. They're like, yeah, you know what? I want to be better on the planet. I want to be better, you know, for animals. And then if I don't need to eat this to be healthy, then forget it. I'm not eating it. And what's that, what happens when people, more and more people decide to, again, not even go hundred percent vegan, even just going plant-based. It's amazing because now we have more plant-based options. It's starting to taste better. Yes. Starting to cook it. You know, it's just, it's just <laughs> fun, you know, and I, I agree with you. Like I'm not the kind of person that's going to guilt or shame anybody for whatever they want to eat. It's just really about being an inspiration through my life and, and and sharing my reasons why. And if that res- resonates with someone, then maybe they'll try. Because for me, I didn't go cold turkey overnight. Like I first cut out pork and then I cut out chicken and I cut out turkey. And then I was just eating fix- fish and eggs because I thought I needed my protein. And then <laughs> I saw 
a very fit athletic vegan who's like, no, I've been 100% vegan for like, you know, like so many years. I was like, wow, so that's possible. And then once I knew it was possible and I could still be healthy, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm in. So I just think it does take time. And I think people should be gentle with themselves because I've noticed when people are gentle with themselves and they're like, you know what, this makes sense to me. Let me just try it. Let me just try it. Let me try a couple of things. Let me, you know, meatless Mondays and plant-based Tuesdays and just, you know, let me try alternate and and because really what kept me was how I felt how my skin looked how I smell you know it's just like everything was better and it continues to be better like I just feel better and better each year because not only do I you know am I 100% vegan but now I've been introducing more herbs into my diet and the power of herbs and taking things like things like sea moss in my smoothie and putting it on my skin and it's just so much out there that we don't know that's not out there in the mainstream that we're not being told every day that really blesses our lives and allows us to live optimally. So that's what I teach in my Get Loved Up yoga school as I teach people how to, I teach people optimal health and wellness basically. And no, you don't have to be perfect, but here's how to be optimal and then do the best you can. And when you don't do it, don't beat yourself up, but just do it most of the time and you're going to be healthy. So I don't have a perfect vegan diet. You know, I eat processed vegan foods sometimes. I eat the donuts and the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> the pancakes and fresh toast on the weekends, but I but during the week I have water with lime every morning. I have my green juice every morning. I have a superfood smoothie every morning. I saute vegetables and have like a stir fry daily and big salads. And so if I'm eating healthy most of the time, I'm going to be healthy. And that's what I want for everyone. I want for everyone to be able to enjoy a healthy life, but also enjoy like with friends and family. You have these celebratory foods. They're not from the south, so I like my lasagna. Yeah, and things like that. And to be able to do that in moderation to where you're not exchanging your health for eating something that you really enjoy eating. Yeah, I I love the way that you, you, you know, you said you still enjoy, you know, you know, nice comfort foods, but generally there is, you know, a very healthy plant based um, lifestyle eating behavior. And then you'll have the donut because that just made me feel better, by the way, right? Because on a Sunday, <laughs> <laughs> we have like a, a store chain called Planet Organic and they do the best vegan donuts. Like they taste better than the normal donuts. Like I'm like, whoa, everyone would <laughs> want to be vegan if they had one of those. But um, yeah, like, you know, you, it, there, there are treats, right? And I like the way you said, you know, like the lasagna and some of those like comfort foods, but within moderation, you know, I truly believe that, we are creatures of habit. So if we were brought up and raised, you know, especially like with some cultural backgrounds to eat a lot of rice and meat and, you know, big hearty meals, it, your body and your even your digestive system is so used to that intake that when you start to change, it can be quite a big shift and you feel almost like uncomfortable. But I think by doing those small ch- steps and changes, like you said, be gentle with yourself and just allow yourself to, you know, slowly, but surely try different things. And the best outcome, right, is what you said, like, you feel better, your skin looks much more healthier, you're glowing. My hair is so much better for it as well. I mean, I, I feel my skin and just energy levels going to a gym class or yoga, I feel I'm just got so much more within me, because of my diet. So there's so many benefits, but ultimately caring for the earth. And I love the reciprocity that comes from it because Mother Earth has an abundance of beautiful plants and natural foods for us to eat. And if we eat those, then we're kinder to Mother Earth and we take away from all the animal farming, the processing and all of that stuff that goes on, um, animal cruelty and and all of those things that we don't want to talk about right now. But so I think it's a beautiful energy exchange and it creates this lovely feeling of abundance and appreciation for what this earth provides for us so there's a lot of respect in it too so I love what you said and actually I wouldn't mind uh, coming over to visit you Koya because it sounds like your average day sounds like the best diet that I'd love to be having too (laughs) (laughs) well thank you so much it's taking a while to figure it out and I, I think that's why I like to encourage people like everyone's nutrition plan is going to look different. And in the back of the book, I give 
a sample nutrition plan. So you kind of have like a template for like, I have a shopping list and I have like just an idea of like foods to eat so that you can create your own. And it's like a, just a seven day meal plan. And I did that because a lot of people always ask me like, what do you eat and what should I eat? You know? And so I was like, let me just put this simple seven day meal plan. So people kind of get like how to go through a week, how much to eat and what to eat and things like that. And I think it's been very, very helpful. And um, I've gotten a lot of good feedback on like, okay, this is what I can eat. And then I have like, what you should not eat, you know, and you know, mm-hmm. so people can say, oh, okay, these are the things that I should stay away from. So I think, you know, people just looking at that, it gives them again, just a guidepost. Um, it, you don't have to be perfect perfect with it. You just want to have a guidepost that you're going by so that you can live life mindfully. Yeah. I, I need to check out the back of the book actually and, and look at the um seven day meal plan. That's really cool. And a lot of our listeners, we've covered some topics on food before and they've asked a lot of questions. They've shown a lot of interest. So I think guys that would be great to check out for sure and see if if that helps you on your journey. Absolutely. It's on page 193. That's where the seven day meal plan starts. Awesome. So I have to say that this part that I do want to talk about next is probably very dear to my heart is the topic of yoga. And personally, and and I never knew that yoga meant union. And when I did find out, I was like, oh my goodness, it makes so much sense because um, I knew about yoga years ago, but In recent years, when I went through so many life changes, yoga was the one part of my life that gave me real peace and a real sense of me understanding who I was and being there for myself. They call it sometimes moving meditation, which I I totally agree with because every time I'd be going through a really challenging moment in my life, and there were some tough moments Uh, dealing with divorce or, you know, family problems, moving home, moving country, new job, leaving a job. Yoga kind of brought me back to who I truly am. Like, forget about all of that out there. Just be present in this moment. And it really forced me to understand the power of my breath and to be present. So I want to talk about your yoga school. You have like, quick, can I just say your qualifications in yoga go like way above my head. Like, I don't even know some of those qualifications. I've never even heard of some of those types of yoga. So I'd love for you to share a bit more and about the the school and the classes that you run. And I know that they're online. So for anyone listening, it's completely accessible. So yeah, could you share more? And I'd love to hear more about your qualifications because I'm I'm super intrigued and there's probably some forms of yoga that I've never even experienced in my life. Absolutely. I mean, I, my biggest reason for creating the Get Loved Up Holistic Health and Yoga School, and the reason I say holistic health and yoga, because really, yoga is unity. So it really encompasses all. But I found that a lot of people are just focused on the pose or the pose that they could or couldn't do. And they didn't really understand the mental, spiritual, and physical aspects of yoga. And so that's why I, I try to teach that yoga is holistic and it is about understanding the interconnectivity of our being and how there are multiple energetic layers to who we are and how to understand those layers and how to use those layers to our advantage. And so when it comes to um, the Get Loved Up Yoga School, we have the 100 hour, you know, and that's just the intro, like introducing people to Uh, anatomy and physiology and knowing your body and understanding your breath and knowing what meditation means, knowing what vinyasa means, like knowing some of these terms that might be taboo to some people listening now. And, you know, you know, because you've been through it, but once you start knowing, getting to know yourself more, you understand how to listen to your body and give your body what it needs to thrive versus when you don't have this knowledge, you're just looking at the news or looking at social media, trying to decide how to live your life. And really they're, they don't know. And they're just basically marketing to tell you what you don't have to give you something which you don't, don't need or to make you think you need it. Right. Versus (laughs) really 
knowing your body, understanding your body, knowing what you need. So it's very empowering um, just to start out with a 100 hour, whether you want to teach or not. And then the 200 hour is the first level we have where you can actually become a certified um, yoga, holistic health and yoga instructor. And that does not mean you have to teach yoga. Like some people teach meditation. Some people just, you know, share on social media, like what they've learned. Like it literally, the sky is the limit, but you're certified to hold classes if you want. And you Will be trained to teach and hold space. You will know how to teach a vinyasa flow class. So if you wanted to teach five people or if you wanted to teach a thousand people, you would know how. And now we have our Get Loved Up online studio. So we actually teach regularly online virtually. And most of the people that come through the certification, they have an online yoga school already to train at so that we can make sure that they are the best teachers. And they also have a place to teach at um, and hold space at. So I'm really, really happy and excited about it. And then we have the 300 hour and also a 500 hour. And that's basically just learning more and more. And some of the credentials that I got, because you asked about that was like my breathwork certification. That's one of the most powerful ones because learning how to use this tool, the breath, something that we have for free when we enter this world and something that we can use to help keep us balanced and on purpose until we leave and don't need it anymore. So to know how to use the breath to either trigger our sympathetic nervous system, which gives us that that energy that we need to be alert and be active, or the parasympathetic that helps us rest and recover and rebuild. So no matter which one you want, you can use the breath to get you to those different states. And a lot of times we're amped up by the news. We're amped up by things going (laughs) on. So we're in the sympathetic and we're, we're straining our adrenals and we're burning ourselves out and we're drinking all the caffeine. Right. And then we're like, Oh, I'm exhausted. And so we're not getting enough of that parasympathetic, that resting, which we get through meditation, which we get through um, some slower yoga, which we get when we get six to eight hours of sleep. So that's what we need more of right now. Um, but sometimes people do need to be amped. So I teach them, you know, you know, breath of fire, you know, and how to breathe and, and, and stimulate your circulation and blood flow. So there's basically something for everyone, whether you want to move slow or fast in life, knowing your body, knowing your mind, knowing how to connect with your purpose is so important. And that's what I love to teach. And then I also felt like that the entrepreneurship piece was missing because a lot of times, okay, you get yoga, you're a yoga teacher, but it's like, how do I make a living? Like, how do I make, this is not a regular, like doctor, teacher, lawyer, you know, it's not a nine to five job. So how do I create a, a career for myself? And so me teaching like online marketing and how to build your community and how to be on social media and things like that. They're so important to empower the students to be the best and to create their own communities for themselves and and to know their value and worth and how much to charge and how long to make the classes and how to create a funnel online to take people through the journey of your choice. And it's, it's so much fun, but you have to take time to learn it just like anything. It's just like going to school. You have to learn the vocation. You have to learn the trade, but when you do, it's so much fun because you're doing exactly what you want to do. Yeah, I I love that. And I love the fact that, you know, the, the teaching is not just about yoga. It's about the whole, the whole sphere of it, because it's true when you get into the area of spirituality, which I'd say like yoga, well-being and, you know, energy and intuitive readings and things like that. It's not the typical, the norm that the world knows and society knows, but they are actually as valuable and there is a lot of demand for it. So it's like, how do you, you know, you don't necessarily see it happening as much or it's happening, but you're like, well, how would I make that into a career or take it down a more serious path? So That's really cool. It's really interesting. I actually had an affirmation. I'm going to share. It just came to my mind as you were talking that my affirmation was about me becoming more skilled in yoga to be at a teacher level, not necessarily that I wanted to teach, but I just want my yoga to become, you know, just more enhanced and become more stronger in my postures and be able to do all of the postures. And it's interesting because I'm curious, and I'm going to selfishly ask this question, that do you, you know, 
if you if you wanted to become a teacher level, do you have to be able to do every single posture, Koya? Or, you know, is are you are you allowed like to do 90% of them? Like how how do you get, you know, completely certified? Well, I always like to say the more you practice, the more you are. And you can't teach someone something that you don't know. So every teacher can only teach up into the level that they uh-huh. have mastered. Because then how are you going to help someone else if you really don't know? You can have an idea and maybe your body is different and you can, you know, because of your teaching and because of your understanding of anatomy, you're able to guide people to that place um, so that 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 does happen. But really practicing every day and educating yourself to the utmost that's how you're going to direct people so it's to answer your question it's not about all the poses that you can do it's about knowing how to hold space it's about knowing how to encourage and inspire um, others to go to that next level for themselves but when it comes to the actual postures it's hard for you to teach a posture that you have not yet mastered and understood how to breathe into or how to move move into. But when it comes to being a teacher, that's different. When it comes to being a teacher, it's not just, again, it's not just about the pose. It's about the breath. It's about spacious. It's about meditation. So, you yeah. know, you don't know, have to know how to do certain poses to be a great teacher. You do have to understand flow. You do know how to understand teacher structure and how to hold space in your class. You have to learn how to adjust your students and get them to a safe space and keep them safe. Safety is the number one thing you have to know in your class. So um, hopefully that gives you peace of mind to know that it's more so about holding space and you do that so beautifully. So I would just, if I was anyone listening, you're interested and you're worried about having to know the poses that like my mom got their certification, you know, and she um, did the poses and she's like, I didn't never thought I could do that, but you would be amazed about what you can do when you practice every day. It's a daily practice. And I think that When you commit to a daily practice and you're not focused on what pose can I do? You're not focused on how much money I can make. You're not focused on the end, but you're focused on every day doing the best you can and sharing that with others. That's when you know you're in alignment. That's when you know. That's beautiful. And I just have to say... Sequoia's mom, <laughs> mama, you are a gangster. Like that is so She's great. a bad man, my Gemma. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Have you ever put any videos of mom like on your on your page? I'm I'm oh, now yeah. curious. Oh, I have to check it out. Oh, okay. That is that's so beautiful. And I, I just feel I can feel the energy between you and your mom. And your mm. mom's probably seen your journey and has been inspired. And like I feel that. I oh, that's beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you. Yes, I love my mom. She's so amazing. And she inspires me like every single day, every single day. Shout out mama. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, just on the other side of it, I've met, so I have conversations with friends, work colleagues, right? And I'm, cause I, I mean, I'm, I do yoga regularly and I totally agree with you because I never thought I could do the headstand. And do you know what's so funny is that maybe for me, Personally, I found that I was more capable of doing some of the postures in my own space alone at home. Because when I was in class, especially before COVID, my teacher kept saying, you can do it. But I I think it was because I was with others and I just felt, I just felt like I needed my own privacy. And ever since I've been doing a lot of it from home, I've noticed that I can do more. And I've just been doing little by little. And like you said, if you commit every day just to keep trying and trying all of a sudden you do it. And I I think I even had tears in my eyes when I could actually do the headstand because I've been longing to do it for years. And I realized maybe it's because I need to do it alone in my sacred space and just give myself the time and the patience to just try every day. And I was trying every day. And I think after about six weeks of doing that, then it just came. And I was like, yes, I better not forget it now. <laughs> so. I'm on to the next one, but I speak to friends, family, work colleagues, right? And they're like, oh, I'd love to do yoga. It looks great, but it looks really hard. And that's not for me. And I think they see the postures, right? They see some of the really like, you know, quite challenging postures. It takes time to get into those. 
but it takes practice. And I think they think, oh my goodness, I can't get there. And I try to say, well, no, because yoga is a journey and everyone that practices yoga knows that. And everyone that's in a class could do different from one another. And it's not to be judged. You know, you just embrace what you can do. You know, what advice would you give Koya? Because, you know, you've been on the journey for such a long time. You've been training others to become teachers. You've had students. You've met so many different denominations of people. What would be your advice for those that are looking to start yoga for the first time? I would say if you are ready to start for the first time, just focus on the breath. That's what my teacher told me when I first started. I was intimidated by the poses. I couldn't even touch my toes. And I know some people see what I do today and they're like, wow, I couldn't even touch my toes. And the teacher saw me frustrated and she said, just just breathe, just focus on the breath. And so yoga is the connection of the breath and the body. And when you breathe deeply, you oxygenate every cell in your body. You get your blood flowing and that's going to make you feel good. So just focus on the breath and know the more you focus on the breath and sit in meditation, as you move through the poses, it will come eventually. You're going to get better and better, more flexible, more strong. You're going to get better and better each day. So it's not about being to the flexibility level of myself or anybody else. It's really about just getting better each day and noticing your growth. And some days you'll be sore, just like if you went into the gym and then you'll notice the next week, like, oh, I'm stronger or I'm more flexible and just enjoy the journey. Just know that it is a beautiful journey. And the more you stay consistent with it, the better, the more you put in, the more you're going to get out. So I would just say, get started. I mean, I have, of course, all my stuff on koyaweb.com, but I also have like free videos on YouTube. I have free meditations on like Spotify and like all a whole free meditation for beginners album out there. So just, just get started with your meditation and with your yoga and just take it one day at a time. Thank you, Koya. And your resources are incredible. You are so giving and generous. I think it's beautiful that you share that. And I think it, it helps you know, others to just try out and and see what works for them. And, you know, everyone's different. And I think that's what's beautiful about yoga, right? Because you don't have to do it the same as another. Um, Same with meditation. There's so many different ways to meditate or approaches to get into into a good state of meditation. And the more you do it, the more you try, the more you get into that flow and the feeling. And then you don't want to come out of meditation. <laughs> <That's many moments. laughs> exactly. I tell people yoga and meditation, it's like outfits. You just decide. Some people like to wear the same outfit all the time. Some people like to change it up. Some people like to do more. Some people like to do less. It's like, it's up to you. And once you find out that work, what works best for you, then you start to feel better and better each day. And that's what also what I would suggest for beginners, try different teachers, try different instructors, try different styles of meditation, try different styles of yoga, because you will notice that you need different things at different times. So don't be afraid to mix it up. Don't be afraid to try new things. And then you'll start to find your fit. And then even when you find your fit, don't be afraid to always try something new. And to be honest, every year I get a new certification. This year I'm getting um, an energy healing certification. Last year it was breath work. Before that, I got my Ashtanga yoga certification. Before that, I got my acro yoga certification. And so I always just, I'm open to learn and I'm open to grow. And I feel like when you do that, you just set yourself up for an adventure and you set yourself up to continue growth. And if you're not growing, you're dying. And if you're dying, (laughs) you know, not a physical death per se, but it's like, you just might feel like you don't have anything to live for. You don't feel like you have a purpose, but that's not true. Like we all have a collective purpose to love and be loved. And as long as you're, you're taking care of yourself, you're loving yourself, you're going to be loving others and you're going to be making a a big impact in the world. Those words are so beautiful. Thank you so much. So before we kind of wrap up this episode, and I've been really inspired by everything you've said, Koya, I can't let this one go. I was I was reading up about your celebrity coaching and I was like, no way. I saw that you've coached the likes of Stevie Wonder, super legend, like, oh my gosh, rest my mom's soul. She's a big Stevie fan and P Diddy. And I was like, no way. How would, like, how did that go down? You know? And I I just wanted to pick your brains and for you to share, like, 
were they good students? Did they behave? And did they manage to reach their goals? Like how did the dynamic work? You know what? Working with um, Stevie Wonder was one of the biggest blessings that I ever had in my life. To be honest, to see someone so consistent. I mean, Stevie Wonder is legendary and still every day practices practices his skills, you know, and it just inspired me to that we have to be consistent, no matter how great we are, we have to be consistent. So being able to share nutrition and plant-based nutrition and food and well-being, you know, with people like Stevie Wonder and Pete Diddy and um, things like that, it's, it's, it's just an honor because these um, people, they have Ashley Judd, I mean, they have such an amazing work ethic that it's inspirational. And I think we can all take some notes from people because once you've reached that status, a lot of people just see all the glitz and glamour, but they don't see how hard it is to maintain your schedule and how hard it is to stay healthy and how hard it is to be surrounded by so many people pulling on you and needing you and wanting you. And it's very, extremely, extremely draining. So I felt it an honor to be able to come in and provide like a structure and a template for nutrition and, and for food and for well-being. I, I consider it such an honor. So, I mean, they, they were great, you know, they did the best that they could. And, you know, that's all you can do when, when you have that, that high a call on your life where you really have to show up every single day, not only for yourself, but for so many you're holding space for. And for me, again, it was just such an honor to be able to um, work with people who live that type of lifestyle. Well, I I am sure that they were honored to have such an incredible divine feminine like you, Koya, that is awakened, is is full of love, and that shows it in every part of of your life um, to the wider community, and you inspire and you live by that, you know, which, like you said, it's hard. So I'm sure they were honored to have you. (laughs) <laughs> thank you so much so you know what I could talk to you for another hour Koya like I, maybe more hours like I I have so many things I'd love to ask you about yoga because I'm I'm captivated by what you do and and, and I have to say you know when you do those poses with other um other people the other ladies I am just in awe like I just don't comprehend how you do it and I I said to myself Steph no there's a lot of trust there's a lot of surrender and this is co-creation with universal energy at its finest I just love those videos I really enjoy watching them when you put them up Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, it's really the feedback and the testimonials and the letters that I get that really keeps me going. So anybody listening, if you leave a review, if you listen to the podcast, or if you read the book, just those reviews and those thank you letters, they really do light up my soul and they keep me going when things get hard and overwhelming and exhausting. So thank you so much for your your feedback and your encouragement, because it really does help me just, you know, know that what I'm doing is is making an impact in the world. And I have to say, you did one video recently. It was like um, the comedy one where, you know, it was like you didn't, you guys didn't get into the um, the posture or you kind of like slipped. And I loved that because that's authentic. <laughs> like that's authenticity at its finest. Like, you know, even you have your challenges and, and the, the other ladies that you work with shout them out. I don't know their names, but I just love that. I actually watched it a few times because it just made me laugh, but it made me see we all are like trying to grow and learn and we will like trip up and fall, but we have to just get back up and keep going. Right. Absolutely. Daye and Kristen are my acro partners and they're so much fun because, you know, they didn't know how to do acro before meeting me, but we practice yoga together and then we have acro time after. And it's just so, it's so much fun because, you know, beyond the pose, we're practicing trust. We're practicing strength, stability, support. We're practicing things that we actually take off the mat. Like in the pose is just a vehicle. Yoga is just a vehicle for life transformation. And that's what I try to tell people. It's beyond the mat. It is so much that you learn by putting yourself in these hard 
poses, there are like challenges in life. And if you can breathe through these poses on your mat and get through it, even though it's painful, then when you have challenges in life, you're already practiced your practice. And so you don't lose yourself in the challenge. You realize there's a higher purpose and you realize that you will grow over time. Wow. That's beautiful. So Koya, I have to say goodbye and I don't want to. (laughs) I love your energy woman. Oh, but thank you so very much for giving us your time, your wisdom, your energy today. I mean, you are an inspiration. You you will continue to make me want to become more skilled in my yoga and just to become a better person. I really do look up to you. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you for saying that. I'm so grateful that I could. I'm so grateful you had me on your podcast. And, you know, I know you asked me to leave a quote at the end. And one of my favorite quotes is, you know, when you're thinking about what should I do, you know, how am I going to get through this? My answer for that question is always the same for people going through different, different things. And the answer is love yourself, love others and love the world in that order. If you're always pouring into yourself and nurturing yourself first and most, you're always going to have enough to share and support and serve others. And when you're serving others, it is making the world a better place. And, you know, that's that's my quote that, that I share with people to just love yourself, love others, love the world in that order. Thank you so much, Koya. Thank you. Have a good day.